Hello there. Welcome to this channel. This is video three. I'm Dick van Oeveren and in this video series, I'm going to demonstrate how to build a data center from scratch using Aruba CX switches and Aruba Fabric Composer. Not just that, but also uh, showing you some very cool stuff around the Aruba 10,000 switch. Um, so we're on video three. Let me show you what is on video three. It's not going to be a large and big video. And uh, actually, I'm going to show you the uh, various integrations that we have with uh, third party systems. Um, and especially the vSphere integration is interesting here. So I'm going to show you how to integrate with vSphere and how to integrate with the Pensando Services Manager. And so let's get started. Let's start with the vSphere integration. Um, going into the configuration integration section, and then you see this vSphere, VM vSphere integration option here. I have two vSphere hosts. They're actually uh, SimpliVity hosts, and I'm going to add those two uh, separately onto the, uh, in, into the integration section. So let me just add the first one. Provide the host IP address. And the administrative account. Let's see if the validation works. Yes, um, this means that I can log into the vSphere host and I can obtain information. And so in this screen, I have a couple of very interesting options. Um, so the first here is the automated VLAN provisioning for ESX hosts directly connected to the fabric. And what I can do here is um, I can provide a VLAN range. And now what happens if uh, I provide this VLAN range? When, um, when the server admin creates a VM on the vSphere host, um, and it assigns that VM to a port group that is assigned to VLAN 1211. So that port group is configured for VLAN 1211. Uh, Once that VM is deployed on the server, on, on the host, AFC will automatically detect or it will obtain that information from vSphere and it will automatically provision the right VLAN to the interface onto which that VM is connected. And what that means is, is that you don't from a networking perspective, you don't need to do any provisioning of network configuration anymore. Um, this is all done automatically. And then obviously what you can do is you can uh, provide a VLAN range. So um, instead of providing the complete range of 4,000 uh, VLANs, you can say, well, you know, only these VLANs are allowed to be automatically deployed on the switchboard. Um, so the second one is the automated VLAN provisioning for uh, connecting through intermediate switches. This is typically something that you don't see a lot. Um, so, uh, so typically what you see is ESX hosts that are directly connected to, to top of rack switches. Um, so we, uh, we don't touch this option very often. And so this option is the automated private VLAN provisioning is um, an interesting option as well, because later on in one of the later videos, what I'm going to do is I will configure um, micro segmentation. And for micro segmentation, we need this private VLAN functionality where, um, you know, I'm, I'm providing VLANs here, 1203 and 2203. Um, and so in that uh, setup, the VLAN 2203 is the isolated VLAN. Um, I need this VLAN information in here if I want to do uh, automatic private VLAN provisioning onto the switches. Um, and that's, you know, that's obviously I, I like very much uh, and I can automate it uh, through, uh, through this option here. Okay, go to next. I want to enable the discovery protocol. So any LLDP uh, information that I can obtain from vSphere is very nice. So I can get that uh, LLDP information into my AFC database. Um, and, and OK, let's that's the summary. And hit apply. And then the um, 
the integration is done basically um, let me do this for the second one as well so this would be 10.6.59.8 the validation yes we're good here it's also always good to see this little green pop-up there um, I'm gonna do the same for this one and also for the private VLANs enable the discovery protocols next and apply okay and that's really the integrations now once the integrations are done I can get some cool information out of these vSphere hosts and let me just show you that um, I can go into the visualization go into networks you can see the spine leaf switches here and what I can do is I can click on the hosts uh, tick box here and what I have now is I have this additional tab here called hosts you can see the three vSphere hosts here now what I can do is I can select them all up well just let me select them all and you can see where those hosts are connected onto the network I can click on one of the hosts and then what I can do is I can you know, you get some information but I can also then click on the host view and the host view takes me into well you know the, the the host view really so you can see uh, a, a complete like virtualized uh, topology of what is happening on the vSphere host um, in this case it's the uh, 10.6.59.20 you can see for example here I have a port group 1201 that port group is connected to a DVS distributed virtual switch connected to a VMNIC connected to the 10k here and I have a couple of um, VMs attached to that port group so that's that's very cool um, the other the other cool thing about this is is that um, so whenever there is an issue um, so for example a server admin deploys a VM and then um, he claims that he or she claims that there is no connectivity um, it's really very easy to to check this out in the in the host visualization um, you know you might have a VM that is not connected to a port group or maybe the, the DVS is not connected to a VM NIC or maybe there's an inconsistency in the VLAN configuration it's really very easy to to check out and troubleshoot uh, networking issues in this uh, visual in this visualization that's really cool and so the other integration that I will be setting up is the PSM integration I will be um, I will be just setting up the integration and what you'll see later on in the later uh, videos that I will be posting is that with this PSM integration you can really do cool stuff by for example you know if I go into configuration policies I can do all of these policy creation rules I can do that all out of AFC instead of uh, using PSM for that so there's a lot of integration from that perspective but let me just create the integration again it's really very easy to do that um, so let's give it a name PSM my host would be 10.12.99.26 I'll just use the administrative user account I can do the validation here as well let's see if that works yes I got the green pop-up cool and um, so I need to assign this uh, PSM integration to the fabric which holds the 10k switches so that's um, that's like this GBA fabric and and that's really it so we're just applying that PSM integration you can see it's still healthy but it reports unhealthy state but just that's just a matter of refreshing the screen and you can see it's healthy 
you know, it needs to obtain a lot of information from PSM, exchanging information. Um, but, uh, you know, you can see it's all right now. Go back to the dashboard. Um, what I can do on the dashboard, I can actually expand and I can uh, kind of uh, check out some other stuff here. So I can get the VS, uh, VS, VMware uh, inventory. I can see that there are 41 VMs, three hypervisors. Um, I can also go into the, uh, say, like policy inventory, and I can see the policy information um, from PSM. Right, so there's some stuff here that you can uh, tick and check out. And that's it. Um, that concludes this video. Very short video. Um, not much, you know, not not very complex. Um, so in the next video, what I will do is I will start creating the underlay and overlay. So the OSPF underlay, uh, the BGP overlay, uh, create a VRF and those types of things. So so I, I will I'm preparing basically uh, the fabric for uh, for EVPN VXLAN. And that's all uh, for now. Um, I hope you liked the video. If you do, if you do, or if you did, um, I hope you uh, can press this thumbs up button, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Bye.